venerable religious and dear parishioners, we experience more freedom during Lent than we do, I think, at most other times of the year. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm talking about spiritual freedom. And, he, and here's the point that needs to be made, that sin is slavery. Overcoming sin is freedom. In today's gospel, of course, we have the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. And two chapters later, our Lord will say, he who commits sin is the slave of sin or the servant of sin. What that means is that whenever we commit sin of whatever kind, we become more in bondage to our fallen inclinations. So by refusing to give in to sin, by overcoming sin, by doing penance for sin, we are freeing ourselves from bond, spiritual bondage. So that's why it's correct to say we enjoy more freedom during Lent. Why? Because individually and collectively we are doing more penance than we normally would do. We're denying ourselves. We're offering reparation for our past sins. And by saying no to lawful pleasure, we are making ourselves stronger against unlawful pleasure. Now, to the worldling, this doesn't make sense, what I just said. Because to the worldling, Freedom means giving in to one's passions, giving in to whatever one wants. But the truth is that person is falling deeper and deeper into slavery, into bondage. I remember seeing this picture from that uh, adult catechism published in the 1940s, excellent, called My Catholic Faith. And there are some terrifying pictures in there. I forget which chapter this is, but it shows a man being dragged to hell. And the look of terror on his face is unmistakable. It's, it's very gripping. So uh, take a look at it if you have that. By the way, if you don't have that catechism, I urge you to get it. It's something like 160 lessons. It's been reprinted. Um, so you can, you definitely can obtain a copy. But the, but the, uh, the, the, that, that chapter is about the, the bondage that sin creates. And it shows this man being dragged to hell on a, on a wheeled cart. And he's all chained down, and it shows what those chains are. Pride, covetousness, lust, anger, gluttony, envy, sloth. And it shows the devils dragging this, this, uh, this cart along. I believe the, de the devils are in there too, dragging this cart along. Remember, the devil is not our only enemy. Our own fallen nature is our greatest enemy our Adam self, as we, are, as we are told by spiritual writers. So again, it doesn't seem to make sense, does it, from the natural point of view. Natural point of view, give in to yourself. Uh, indulge yourself. And then what happens? Well, that picture, as I said, I remember seeing it as a boy, made a deep impression on me. I hope it will make a deep impression on everyone. 
You let yourself go. You keep indulging yourself. You will become more and more chained down. And Jesus came to break those chains, to free us. And from the spiritual point of view, that's where it all makes sense. That conquering sin is true liberty. Overcoming sin is true freedom. Ask somebody who's been able to overcome some form of addictive behavior. What a battle that was. What a, what a difficulty that was. But they'll, they know they have to be careful not to slip and start falling backwards again. But isn't it so great to not be in servitude, to be in bondage to sinful habits? So this is the message of today's uh, epistle, Laetare Sunday. Laetare in Latin means rejoice. Not rejoice like we will on Easter Sunday, but it's the mid-Lenten break. It's something, one of the most important things for us to rejoice on, that Jesus came to help us break the chains of sin. He gave us the church to belong to. He gave us the mass and the sacraments to help us break the chains, to not be in bondage. And St. Paul, in today's epistle, is using quite the figurative expression here. He says, the old law, which was based on fear, tended towards being a law of uh, of, of repression, you know, uh, you know, really restraining. And of course, that not, not that restraining is a bad thing. We need to do that. But he's saying that he's telling us that the new covenant is the one that liberates us even more than the old law ever could. He talks about Agar, and yes, this is one of the difficult things to understand at times. At times, why could, why did God tolerate even the patriarchs of the Old Testament having more than one wife? Perhaps I could read from Father Goffin's ex, uh, uh, explanation of the epistles and gospels, and he gives us a, uh, brief explanation. It was the common custom in the days of the patriarchs for this to happen. This was permitted by God, partly because they and their descendants would hardly have been satisfied with one marriage, partly because bigamy was a means of promoting the increase of the people of Israel. But what's very clear is that Jesus did away with that forever. He never again would allow taking of more than one spouse. He would never allow divorcing and remarrying. One spouse for life, and he said that is the way it was from the beginning. But anyway, our Lord is, or rather St. Paul is is talking about freedom, and he, and he says we are free. We have the opportunity for spiritual freedom. And the image of that is Jerusalem. It's, it's Sarah having a son, Isaac, and she is the free woman, not the woman who is in bondage along with her child. So let us rejoice on this Laetare Sunday in what God has come to deliver us from. And yes, our Lord would have chains and bonds placed upon him in his passion and death. We know those terrible sufferings he went through, his scourging, his crown of thorns, his crucifixion. And yes, he was chained and bound up with ropes and dragged along by them, but he did it so that you and I 
could break the chains of sin. And this is what we're doing during Lent. We are breaking the chains of sin. We are getting stronger against sin, which means we are having more true liberty. Remember, liberty is not should not be defined as the freedom to do whatever we want or the freedom to do what's wrong. Liberty is the freedom to do what's right. That's the true and proper use of liberty. To do what's right, not to do what's wrong, not to do what is sinful. So let it, we can rejoice in this greater freedom which we are all experiencing together because of this holy season of Lent. This also points to a very important fact about our human nature, is that we are creatures of habit. So whatever we do repeatedly tends to become more and more part of us, which is why we have to have good habits, not bad habits. And how do you overcome a bad habit? With a good habit. How do you overcome a sin? with the virtue that opposes it. Through grace, that all-powerful grace that St. Paul so often talks about, make use of it, keep moving forward, walk in the paths of true spiritual freedom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.